Hey there YouTube, Brenda Petrella here, and today we are going to learn about focus stacking. So basically, focus stacking is a post-processing technique where you combine multiple images that you've taken of a single scene where you've focused at different points along in that scene from the foreground to the background, and then you blend those images together in post-processing. So it is a composite image, and there are some people who take issue with that, but this tutorial is not about that debate. This is just to learn about how to use this technique if you want to use it. And it's pretty simple. I don't do a lot of compositing other than focus stacking on occasion, and it's just kind of fun to do. So why not learn how to do it? So typically in landscape photography, we're trying to get as much of the scene in focus as possible. Not always, especially if you have like a very specific subject in mind, like a wild animal or something like that, then you wanna focus on that subject. But if you're taking a landscape photo and you're trying to capture as much of the scene as possible, then you're trying to get a deep depth of field. And if you wanted to use just one photo for that, then you should find the hyperfocal distance and focus there. And if you've focused at the hyperfocal distance, then everything from half that distance out to uh, infinity should technically be in focus. If you don't know anything about hyperfocal distance, don't worry, just check out my hyperfocal distance video. I go over all of the details there. So why would you wanna use focus stacking? Focus stacking is a way to maximize the depth of field of a scene and get everything tack sharp. My goal today is to find some streams and hopefully some waterfalls because it's right in the middle of spring and we've had tons of rain lately. So we're going to learn two things today, how to photograph waterfalls and also how to use the focus stacking technique. When you're using the hyperfocal distance, sometimes you are sort of forced to use higher f-stop numbers in order to maximize your depth of field, depending on where your foreground subject is and your background subject. And so you might end up inadvertently softening your image a little bit if you have to use f-stops of say f16 or f22. Basically at f-stops of f16 or above, you have the possibility of getting diffraction. So to get around that and to try to get everything in the scene absolutely tack sharp and in focus, then you're gonna have to use focus stack. So one advantage of using focus stacking is that you can use the best aperture for your lens. Every lens has a sweet spot and you can look this up for your lens. Uh, one website that I use to find this is called dxomark.com. So I'll link it below so that you can find it. And you just plug in your lens and it will tell you sort of the, the sharpest aperture for that lens. Typically, that's around f8 to f11 for uh, wide angle lenses that are used for landscape photography. So I hope you can hear me over the running water. So I've set up my composition to include a rock in the foreground that's closer than my hyperfocal distance. So after I take a couple of test shots, I then put on my polarizing filter. And in live view, I'm just going to move the polarizer until the glare is cut down on the water. And I can start to see into the water a little bit. And so for my scene, I'm first going to focus here on this rock, which is right in front of my camera. Next, I will focus on this rock. Then I'll focus on this rock. And then I'll focus on that rock. And I will consider that infinity. Right now, my settings are ISO 100, F8, because that's the sweet spot of my lens, and I want to do focus stacking. And with the polarizer on, my shutter speed is 1 20th of a second. I'm shooting in manual mode, and we could check the histogram here. I could even go a little longer on my shutter speed. So let's go with uh, 1 13th of a second and see how that looks. So the first thing I'm going to do is move my focus square over to this rock. And I'm gonna pick an area of the rock that has some contrast because that is what autofocus focuses on. It's how it works, is it finds area of contrast. So I'm actually gonna pick the corner of that rock and I'm gonna zoom in 100%. I've got my camera on autofocus and so I'm just going to autofocus, see if it works. Let's try that. Go back out and then I'll hit the shutter button. 
So now that I've taken a couple of test shots with my polarizer on, I now want to add an ND filter because I want to slow the, the shutter speed down so that I get that nice creamy look of the water. And so I'm, I'm going to use a six stop ND filter to do this. How do I determine what the shutter speed should be? Well, I can do trial and error and just look at my histogram and adjust the shutter speed accordingly, or I can use the PhotoPills app. So let's open up the app and see how it works. So once you're inside the app, you're going to choose the exposure tool. Here I want to calculate the shutter speed. The next thing is I'm going to input the test settings that I've used. So I was at F8. The shutter speed was 1 13th of a second and my ISO was 100. And then I can input what the ND filter is that I'm using. And in this case, it's the six stop ND filter. And then the app will automatically tell me that my shutter speed should be five seconds. And so now I'm going to increase the shutter speed to five seconds. And you can see as I do that, the histogram shifts to the right. And it actually looks really good. And in fact, I could probably go just a tiny bit more to six seconds. You don't want to have your histogram clipping off the edges. So let's give that a shot. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to have to do this all over again. Focus here, 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 and here. And I will have to take the ND filter off each time I need to refocus. So it's a labor intensive process. So I'm going to go ahead and explore this stream and apply the principles that we just learned. And then we'll go back to the computer and we'll blend them together in Photoshop. Okay, folks, so here we are back in my office and I've already uploaded my images to Lightroom. I've done some quick edits and now I am ready to bring these photos over to Photoshop so that I can focus stack them. So what I have here are the four photos that I took at that scene down by the stream. We're going to hold down the shift key and select all four images. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to create virtual copies of these photos. And this way, whatever I do to them in Photoshop, I don't really need to worry about over in Lightroom because I've made a copy. It's not a necessary step. It just makes me feel better to do. Okay, so now I've created these virtual copies. They're already selected. So I'm going to go ahead and right click again scroll up to edit in and I'm going to pick the last option here which is open as layers in Photoshop and this will take a little while so here we have our four images as four layers in Photoshop and so the first thing that I like to do is make sure that the images are in the correct order so you want it to be in the order of your focus stack so foreground mid ground background or you can do background, mid-ground, foreground. So let's go ahead and see what order we have. So if we click on this little eyeball next to your layer, it will hide that layer. So as you can see, as I'm clicking on and off, that this foreground rock is going in and out of focus. So right now it's in focus. So that means because that eyeball is turned on that that is my top layer. If I turn that off, I'm looking now at the next layer below it, and that's the one that has this middle ground image. And then if I undo the eyeball for that one, I can see the next mid-ground image, and then my final image on the bottom is the one where it has this rock in focus. So I have it in the order that I want. Okay, so I'm turning back all the eyes. So the next thing I'm going to do is select all the images just by holding down the shift key and clicking the top and bottom image. And then I'm going to go over here to edit and scroll down to auto align layers. So let's do that. And I just used the auto projection. So click okay. And now Photoshop is auto aligning the layers. The next thing we need to do is crop the image. So let's go over to our crop tool. And the reason why we have to do this is because when Photoshop auto aligns the layers, there might be some cropping of layers below the layers that you're not seeing. So let's just do a quick check. So if we undo the top layer, you can see the layer below it is, is cropped in a little bit. And if we keep going, things may change. So yeah, there, there's a fair bit of cropping happening with this alignment. So what we're going to do is go ahead and crop the edges down. We're gonna hold down the shift key that keeps the aspect ratio as it is. And I'm just gonna go with the original aspect ratio of this shot, which was two by three. 
That's the native aspect ratio on my camera. So click the checkbox, that'll crop it. And then I'll just check my edges, make sure that it's appropriately cropped and it looks like it is. So I'll turn those layers back on again. Okay, to, so to do focus stacking, you are going to need to learn how to use layer masks. So we're gonna go over the part of layer masks that are relevant to focus stacking. And so basically what we're going to do is we're going to click on our top image. We're then going to click on the layer mask button, which is this black dot within a white square. And that adds this layer mask to our photo. And you can tell that the layer mask is selected because it has this white outline around it. So for instance, if I selected the image, you would see that white outline move over to the image. So we're gonna make sure that the layer mask is selected. And now what we're going to do is we're going to paint away the mask so that we can see through the image to the image below that image. So that's the beauty of layer masks is that it basically will preserve parts of the image and take away other parts of the image so that you can see through these layers to the layers below. Okay, so let's try, give this a try. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our foreground color is black. And the reason why we wanna use black is because we are using a white layer mask. If we used a white foreground color, we would have no effect. So let's get, let's start there. So here we have our foreground color is white. And if we go to the image, nothing happens. That's because the layer mask itself is white. So it's not gonna do anything. So if we go ahead and switch that by pressing this little double arrow, we now switch that to black. And if you need to switch it to black, you can just pick up the color pick, picker and choose black that way. Okay, so now our foreground color is set to black. And then I'm gonna go over to my paintbrush, my brush tool and I can adjust the size of this tool. And we're, let's go here, and I can just start painting on the photo. And what that is doing is basically erasing the part, this part of my top photo, wherever I'm painting. So it's revealing the photo underneath it. So I know that this is the photo where I want to um, keep this foreground rock and a little bit of the foreground in here because then I'm gonna have a photo that does the near midground, the far midground, and then the far background. So I can basically paint over everything in here that I'm not gonna consider foreground. That's pretty good. Okay, so you can see over here on my layer mask that half of it is black and, or two thirds of it is black and one third of it is white. The white part is the part of this photo that we can still see, which is the foreground. And the black is what we are seeing now in the image below it. Okay, so now let's click on that image, add a layer mask, and we're gonna do the same exact thing. Make sure that our foreground color is set to black. We choose our paintbrush, come in here and paint in the midground. Basically, now only half of the image is painted out black rather than two thirds, now it's a half. So now on the next one, we create another layer mask. Now I'm just basically going to be painting in the top fourth of the image. You can see just by looking at the layer masks, you know, we had most, we painted away most of the foreground image, but left the foreground. We painted out about half of the near midground image and about a third of the far ground image. And then we're not gonna do anything to the background image because the white is concealing those areas of the photo, whereas the black is revealing those areas of the photos. And that is how you do focus stacking. So at this point, I could do some more editing in Photoshop if I wanted to. And if not, then I would go over to here and I would just hit save. And now this will be saving a TIFF file back in Lightroom. Okay, and that's really it. So I hope you enjoyed this video on how to focus stack and how to photograph waterfalls and moving water. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Check me out over on Instagram. I try to post other content over there as I can. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot.